Okay, good day students. We are welcome to another interesting section of a biology class by Mr. Jot at onclass.com.ng. My name still remains Jagera Olushola Temitokwe, and today's topic will be evolution, organic evolution. At the end of today's lesson, each and every one of us should be able to define the term evolution. State the trend in evolution. Number three, describe some evidences of evolution. And number four, to compare Lamarck's and Darwin's theories of evolution. Let's start with definition of evolution. What is evolution? My first definition here will tell you that evolution is the gradual change in complexity of hereditary features of organisms from generation to generation. It's saying that there is a change in the form and complexity of organisms from generation to generation. Evolution is looking at the world, the term change in organism. And number two definition is going to be, it is simply a theory of change in forms, structure and functions amongst organisms over a long period of time from the pre-existing ones leading to the different existing species of organism. What is this saying is that evolution is not just a, a, a term up with it's a theory fact, and observation it's a theory that has been tested over time by different scientists and it's still talking about change in the complexity in the structure of organisms that existed in the ancient of time till the present different diversity of organisms that we have now and number three definition they say it's that it is the sum of adaptive changes from the pre-existing form that have taking place over a long time now resulted into diversity of form, structure, and functions among organisms. This definition is also referring to change in organisms, which has enabled organisms to acquire certain adaptive features, some properties that is enabling them to survive in their present environment. Let's look at the trend in evolution. The trend in evolution are in so many ways but i would just highlight three examples to see number one trend that is showing the pattern that evolution has taken in some aspect is the change in habitat of organisms from aquatic to terrestrial evolutionary trend over time has shown that organisms evolved from water from the marine habitat and gradually they were acquiring features which enables them to survive in changing environment they have to change from water to land number two trend that i will discuss is about increase in morphological complexity of organism when you mean increase in morphological complexity you are saying the increase in the number of adaptive features that give organisms the chance to survive in a changing environment in a different environment such as organisms that do not have limb or, or, or structures locomotive structure like amoeba the protozoan in an amoeba in protozoan amoeba has no locomotive structure but there is a change in complexity by possession of flagellum or cilia which some other organisms have used to have more complexity so and it's showing that organisms also move from aquatic habitat to land those that have fins or sim smaller structures for movement or swimming in water will acquire a muscular uh, muscular limbs to now begin to run or uh, walk on the terrestrial habitat that's for increase in morphology and the last trend i will look at is increase in the body size of the organisms more cells more mass this is about saying that organisms that were existing in the olden days were gradually increasing in their body size considering as a good example echoes the horse family the origin of the ancient or the first organism that originated to become the present day horse was having small size it was increasing from years to years until it has increased to this very much size that of organism we are having today okay i will add one example even the chicken of the ancient days were not having massive body as we have now but changes are occur or evolution has occurred that will now have chicken or fowl birds that have in larger size due to many environmental factors.
let's discuss evidences of evolution. Number one evidence I will discuss will be the evidence from fossil record. And the second that I will discuss is a comparative anatomy. Looking at evidence of evolution from as angle of fossil records. Fossils are the remains of ancient organisms or they are prints even on the rock, sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock is a kind of rock that forms strata or layered in by generation to generation where we'll be having different forms of organism buried there, the remains of them buried. By paleontologists, it has been able to discover that these organisms were forming a pattern of evolutionary trend such that the oldest organism were buried at the bottom of that rock and the younger one that died and their prints were found at the level higher. And through radioactive element dating, it could be discovered that these organisms were having increase in complexity or changing in forms and they were similarity and showing a certain trend. So evidence from fossil records is a direct record of evolution. It's a direct evidence because the organisms could actually be studied properly. The number two which I said I will discuss now is the comparative anatomy. Comparative anatomy is talking about the study of organs of organisms. When you look at the organs of organisms of the vertebrate especially, they look alike. These are, organ these are um, organs that we will call homologous organ in the sense that they resemble or they have the same form of um, origin. They have the same origin, they have the same form of pattern, of structure, though they are not doing similar functions. So in a nutshell, homologous structure will be termed as the structure or organ that have the same origin or blueprint but are not really performing same function. For example, let's take the arm of human, <clears throat> the arm of human and the forelimb of horse, the flipper of a whale, the flipper or the forelimb of tortoise, a frog and bird. Looking at all this I mentioned, they are same um, organ because they are from the same origin, but they are not doing the same function, though some may be doing the same function. I will take for instance, the flipper of a whale and the wing of a bird. They have humerus, they have radius and ulna, the structures representing these bones. As we have humerus to radius and ulna, after the radius and ulna, we have the carpus, metacarpus, the phalanges. Now, this, the phalanges that we're talking, they are every one of them. They are performing their functions differently, but Let's they have the same body, the bone structure. Number three, evidence of evolution, which is talking from evidence from biochemical substance or the hereditary biochemical substance that is dna the oxyribonucleic acid all organisms have these genetic materials and the genetic materials are the same in components the components of dna include the four organic bases which are the adenine adenine in the dna structure always pair with thymine the thymine and adenine are bonded together by hydrogen bond and while cytosine and guanine also bond together in DNA structure and they are also joined together by hydrogen bond. Now, this is the same pattern all organisms have and this is why it is possible for uh, genetic engineering as a process to use bacteria, the plasmid of bacteria in genetic process in modifying organisms. Looking at this, this is showing that evolution is showing the changes and transformation from in organisms of the ancient past and i told you earlier that bacteria or the protomonerans were the form of organism that existed before number four evidence of uh, evolution that i will talk about is the comparative embryology embryology means the study of the development of organism from time of conception after Fertilization of sperm and egg, a zygote is formed. The, comple the increase in complexity of zygote is from, uh, from zygote to the embryo stage and to the time it will be released from the uh, mother's body is known as um, study or uh, is embryology. That the study of this development is known as embryology. Looking at the embryology of human, after zygote is formed, the first appearance of organism that will be seen looks like that of a fish. A fish 
has a tail and has a kind of gills cover. We have this pharyngeal pouch. This pharyngeal pouch becomes the gill in a fish after fish has developed to a point. Then, if we consider the development of amphibian, e.g. salamander or toad, they also have that same pattern. It shows that these similarities in the structure of the embryo of this vertebrate is showing or is expressing evolutionary relationship. And that is also the evidence that organisms evolved at one point to the other to the present day organism we have. The tail of human at a point become reduced to cosics. Why the tail of other organisms was retained and it was used for a purpose. Meaning that Cossex in human is a vestigial structure, just like appendix is also a vestigial structure in us. Why? What are vestigial structures? These are organs that have become reduced in size as because they are not in use, and which is one of the evidence that is given to us by Jane Lamarck. And lastly, let's discuss briefly what are the theories of Jane Lamarck. In summary, Jean Lamarck was a scientist that brought the idea of use and disuse in his theory and is saying that structure is modified by use or disuse. Then the modification of this structure is inherited to, by, to the offspring and that can be in a summary known as inheritance of acquired characteristics. This theory of Jean Lamarck of acquired characteristics was disproved by Westman, another scientist, who used several generations of mice by cutting their tail to see the kind of offspring that will come and at the end, the offspring that were being produced were not having a cut tail. Each generation of mice produced have cut tail and we mate with one another and discover that the offspring produced will still not have a cut tail but a complete tail. With this experiment, it could be concluded that no acquired character could be transferred from generation to generation. And what was the explanation that Jean Lama gave? Jean Lama gave the explanation of giraffe, that when the environment was harsh, there was no food and giraffe had to feed, they were looking up the tree. They stretched their neck to get the leaf from the tree. And stretching their neck was what they were doing to feed and he said that character of stretching neck was what they passed to their offspring, to the present long neck giraffe that we are having today. This belief, I said, was still disproved. So it is not that acquired character can be transferred. And lastly, Charles Darwin was the next scientist who brought his idea and he wrote his own theory as modification by descent. And in his work, he said that only biologically inherited characteristics were advantageous in surviving and reproducing. His theory was based that organisms could give birth to many children as possible with variations, with different characteristics, with different surviving abilities. And only those that can survive, only those that, can, that have the advantageous characters survive. And that, those that could not survive would die and this is what was referred to as natural selection now it's according to charles darwin charles darwin made us to understand that characters that can be inherited are those ones that are affecting the gene the genetic modification of human and is in his last he said the offspring will also inherit and pass on those advantageous character to their next generation and which has led to changes in organism that we have today thank you because Everything that we have learned today, I believe you have understood how to give a quite brief definition of evolution, one, and you, I can tell the state, the, um, the trend in evolution, and you can tell all the evidences given, evidence by comparative anatomy, evidence by fossils record, evidence by the genetic materials that is transferred, which is the same, and evidence by, from um, comparative embryology. At the end of this lesson, please go to the worksheet section, click the